one of the big things was that you can't put anything before God, like anything. And that, and for them, it's like you can't put anything before the church. Um, even the slightest little bit of, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go and do this instead of like going to like a discipling group or something like that. Something was planned for that day with a disciple and you decided, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to go watch this movie with my husband that they would consider that idol idolatry. And so it's like putting something with like th their, their version of idolatry is not like, um, not like actual like praying and worshiping to like a golden statue. It's just anything that you put before, before the church. And so that was one of the, that was one of the things that, that was always looming over a disciple's head is that they're, um, they're always watching for something like that to happen. They're always looking for something to, to be wrong. And if they can't find anything wrong, they make something wrong. Uh, after you're baptized, you have, um, you're supposed to have a close relationship with another disciple. They call this person a discipling partner. Um, this person is supposed to be the person that you go to with um, your problems, with uh, your struggles, with, you know, your sin. Um, and this person is supposed to help you get through this part. Um, for me, um, a, my discipling partner was, um, was, a, was a woman in my area in the married's ministry that, was, um, uh, that lived kind of closer to me. Um, she lived probably about 15 minutes away from me. And, um, and she had been in both my studies. So we were, we were pretty close. The, the, the problem with being in a discipling partnership with someone who's, who's very, very different from you is that they find things about you that they, um, that they see as sin. Like for instance, um, she's a very uh, type A and she's very um, OCD and uh, her house is very pristine and, and clean and everything. And I'm a little bit more of the creative person. The house is a little bit messy. Uh, I, I, I function in a little bit of clutter, sometimes a lot of clutter. And that was not okay with her. Um, and eventually she got to the point where, um, where she was so frustrated with me uh, not taking care of my house that um, she called CPS on me to uh, try to have my children removed from my house because, um, because my house wasn't up to her standards. Um, and then uh, when, the, the, the thing is, though, is that uh, when, you're, um, when you're in a relationship like that, it's very uh, destructive and you're told you have to forgive them because that person's your sister. Now you have, to be, you have to be a certain way with them. And so when she told me I called CPS on you, um, it was, it's like being betrayed by somebody who's, supposed to be there for you like she she was supposed to be there for me she was supposed to help me instead of hurting me and then there was always like this this always an excuse for everything that they do oh I'm a mandated reporter um there's this there's that oh I had to do it there if, if I didn't do it then you wouldn't listen like this is urgent things like that like um um but after uh, CPS did eventually come, after my son was born, he was about a month old and CPS did eventually come and they told me, um, yeah, this is, it's cluttered. Uh, we've seen worse. It's so, like, this is not, this is just lived in. This is like, I, I've like, they, they're like, we've seen hoarders and that's a dangerous situation. Like this is nothing 